It's that time again. It's time for a short stop with a short stop. Today we're going to talk about let's not let sin define our lives. When I was playing baseball, there, there was one time that I made three errors in one inning. And let me describe that to you. In one inning, I made two on one play. There was a ball hit to me. <clears throat> and there was a man on first and second. And I booted the ball. Okay, there's one error. And I picked it up and I threw it away at first base and that allowed one run to score. So there's two errors, a boot and a a throwing error. A couple innings later, there was a couple guys, one on third, one on second. They were in scoring position and there's a ball hit to the outfield. And I'm the relay man. So the outfielder throws it to me. I throw it home. I threw a pretty good one hopper to the catcher, but you know he tried to make a tag a little bit quick, but the ball gets by him and the run scores. So they give me another error. So I've made three errors in one inning. But a good athlete has to have a short time memory. What do I mean by that? Because you never know about where the next ball is going to be hit. It can always be hit to you. And if you're out there whining or moping or groaning, nine times out of ten that next ball is coming to you. And usually if you're doing that, what's going to happen? You're going to boot another one or you're going to throw another one away. Let me give you a story about a, a guy that I played against and I think he was one of the greatest players that I ever played against. Uh, his name was Bill Buckner. <clears throat> I played against him when he was with the Cubs. He started off with the Los Angeles Dodgers. When he was with them, he was an outfielder. Very quick, very agile, a great athlete, great hitter, had a strong arm. But he he ran into the outfield wall and literally tore his ankle all to pieces. But he rehabilitated it. It took him about a year to where he could come back and he could even look like he could halfway run. But he ran with a limp and he walked with a limp. But in 1986, uh, matter of fact, it was October the 26th, 1986, the World Series was being played. And it was the Mets against the Boston Red Sox. And on this date, uh, on the 26th of October, the series was three games for Boston and two games for the Mets. So you got to win four games to be able to win the World Series. But it's in the 10th inning, and the ball game is tied. There's a winning run is on second base. His name is Ray Knight. And Mookie Wilson is at at the plate. Now, get the scenario. They're in extra innings. It's the 10th inning. Game is tied, bottom of the 10th. There's two outs. It's a 3-2 count on Mookie Wilson. He hits a two-hopper down to uh, first base. Bill Buckner comes up the field. It goes right between his legs. Ray Knight comes around and scores. Now, did Bill Buckner let that error define his life? He didn't because he went on to play many years after that. He came back <clears throat> and played with Kansas City. He went with the California Angels. And lo and behold, the last year he played was with the Boston Red Sox again. Now, they went on and played game seven because that tied the World Series up 3-3. Three to three. The Mets did win the World Series because they won game four. But Bill Buckner did not let that one error define his career. Because if you go look at it, his hits, his home runs, his RBIs, uh, his doubles, his triples, they are some of the best statistics that you will ever see from any ball player. But let me tell you about a couple of people in the, uh, in the Bible. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, we have a story of King David seeing 
Bathsheba over on the roof. And he sends a messenger over there to her and gets her. And he uh, messes around with her the way that he shouldn't have. And lo and behold, she ends up getting pregnant. But she has a husband by the name of Uriah. And David tries to call him back from battle and get him to go and be with his wife, but he won't do it because his buddies are still out there in war. So David sets an ambush up for Uriah and literally has him killed. He not only has his wife pregnant, but he kills the husband. Now that seems like craziness to me, but that's exactly what he did. But later on, a prophet came to David and told him what he had done, told him what he had done was wrong. And David prayed to God that he would forgive him. And he did. And if you, if you look in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14, when God was looking for another king after he was going to get rid of King Saul, God said he was looking after a man that was after his own heart. And who was that person? It was King David. But David did not let this, these sins define his life. He went on and tried to have, uh, the, be the best leader that he could possibly be, but he failed in a lot of different ways. But yet he was willing to go to God and ask Him for forgiveness. And that's called repentance. And David was willing to repent. Let's look at the Apostle Paul. In Acts chapter 9 and verse 13 through 15, it reads as follows. Uh, now let me set this up here for you. Paul was going on a road. He was getting ready to go to Damascus and he was looking for Christians to be able to kill or put in jail. But there was a, a great light that came to him and, and he was blinded. And it was Jesus talking to him. And Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why thou per persecuted me? And Paul said, who are you? And Jesus says, I'm, I'm Jesus the Christ. And then Jesus started talking to him. But Paul, there was a man by the name of Ananias. And Ananias was a little bit afraid because he had been told to go into Damascus and tell Paul what he needed to do. And in verse 13 it says, But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about the man, how much harm he did to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the sons of Israel. His name was Saul at this time. He was wanting to put Christians in prison and he was wanting to literally kill them. And Paul was not a good guy, but he was not going to let this sin define his life. Paul went on three different missionary journeys. But what did he do before that? If we go back and look, Ananias, when he got to Damascus and saw Paul sitting in a corner, blind, praying, that's what Paul was doing. He had a godly sorrow because he knew what he had been doing was wrong. And Ananias went over and touched him and, and he got his sight back. But then Ananias gave him a statement. And he told him, he said, Why tarriest thou arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord? And Paul did just that. He had his sins washed away. But yet he did not let the things that he had done before define his life, the sin that he had done. Now, there may be some of you all out there thinking, God won't forgive me but He will. No matter what you have ever done in your life in any way, form, or fashion, if you will have that godly sorrow and are willing to repent and get away from that sin, whatever sin it may be in your life, whether it's alcohol, drugs, looking at pornography, I'm talking about, you, you may have killed some, I don't know. But God will forgive you. I want you to get this in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. It says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Everybody that's in that church building are sinners, but yet they have repented and are trying to live their lives to the best of their ability. 
Anything that you have done, you can be forgiven for. The church is a hospital for sinners. Paul went out and preached the gospel. He helped establish congregations. He tried to build the brethren up. He would go to congregation after congregation after congregation and make sure that they were preaching the truth. Do not let sin define your life. Have a short time memory because we all make errors and sometimes we may make three in one inning. Thank you again for being with a shortstop with a shortstop.